Welcome to the Teltonica Configurator Overview Series. Today, we will go through the System tab, where we can find many settings important for the correct operation of our devices. The first setting you will see after opening the Configurator is the movement source, which is responsible for switching the device from on stop to moving mode and vice versa. There are four possible sources we can choose from for this setting. Ignition. As it states in the name, in this mode, we are switching the movement state based on the ignition state, meaning that movement will switch to the moving state as soon as the ignition is detected. One of the downsides of this feature is that you cannot use excessive idling detection as ignition and movement are tied together. Accelerometer. This is the default movement source, which uses the accelerometer installed in all our devices to detect movement. Because we are using actual physical device to detect movement, detection accuracy is very good. Additionally, we have accelerometer delay settings, which allow us to adjust how sensitive the movement detection should be for movement start and stop, GNSS. With this source selected, in order for the device to switch the movement state from on stop to moving, the device has to detect speed that is higher than 5 km per hour. This is a hard set condition and it cannot be adjusted. Also, for this source to work, the device has to have a GNSS fix, so it should only be used in use cases where vehicles will be operated in an area with good GNSS coverage. CAN speed. This source can only be used if we have a device capable of getting the speed data from the vehicle. So you must use a device that is capable of reading CAN OBD data or use an external OBD dongle. With this source, the speed detected from the vehicle, ECUs must be higher than zero kilometers per hour. As mentioned before, we recommend using the accelerometer source for the movement source or using a combination of sources for added redundancy. The ignition source setting is really important for the correct operation of our device, as an incorrect source or false detection can cause issues with OBD data reading, immobilizer scenario and other features that rely on ignition to be detected accurately. Also, please keep in mind that different devices might have different amounts of possible ignition sources, so today we will go through the main ones. Digital Input 1 or DIN 1 in short. Connecting the digital input to the ignition wire is one of the most accurate ways we can detect ignition. Digital Input 1 is specifically designed for this, with the threshold of DIN 1 raised to 7.5 volts, meaning that the digital input 1 only changes state from 0 to 1 if the voltage is more than 7.5 volts, allowing us to filter out any residual voltage which could cause the ignition to be detected inaccurately. As for the other digital inputs, this threshold is set to 2.5 volts. Accelerometer. While we recommend using the accelerometer for movement detection, for ignition detection, this is one of the less preferred options and should only be used if other sources are not available because it switches the ignition state just based off the vehicle movement, which could sometimes lead to false ignition detections. Power voltage. A source available on all of our devices, which works based on the external voltage the device receives. The idea of this source is to detect the ignition based on the voltage change that occurs when the engine is started and the alternator starts charging the car battery. Because of this, the voltage in the vehicle's electrical system increases, allowing us to detect that the engine is now running. The downside of this source is that it cannot be used in electric vehicles and vehicles with smart alternators or start-stop systems, as systems in such vehicles can turn off the charging system even if the vehicle is just stopped at a red light, causing the ignition to be detected as off incorrectly. Engine RPM Similar to CAN speed for movement source, for this ignition source to work, the device has to be able to read RPM data from the vehicle ECUs. This data cannot always be read, 
due to various OEM adjustments made by the car manufacturers, so the user has to first make sure that we can read this data from the ECU before configuring the device to detect ignition based on this source. One of the best ways to save on power consumption is using sleep modes. They allow the device to switch off some of the components, that way allowing the device to consume less power, but still keeping the device active, so it wouldn't need to complete a cold start procedure. There are multiple sleep modes with different operation logic, but all of them have one thing in common. They will disable the GNSS receiver, so records that are generated while the device is in sleep mode will have the last known location reported in them. Now let's see what are the differences between various sleep modes our devices offer. GPS Sleep. As it states in the name, this mode only disables the GNSS, GPS receiver, while all other modules are kept active. This mode saves the least amount of power compared to other sleep modes, but it almost halves the power usage of a device that is not using sleep mode at all. Deep Sleep. In this sleep mode, we are trying to preserve even more power, so the device disables both GNSS and GSM modules. It of course allows us to reduce power consumption, but because the GSM module is completely off in this sleep mode, the device is not able to receive any SMS GPRS commands while in this sleep mode. Because of this, this sleep mode is not suitable for car sharing solutions and should only be used when we know that it is not critical to be able to reach the device via SMS commands at all times. Online Deep Sleep To combat the downsides of deep sleep, the online deep sleep mode was implemented on our devices, allowing us to only partially disable the GSM module, allowing the device to be reachable via SMS commands. The power consumption increase because of this is minor, so it is one of the most popular sleep modes among our clients. All three sleep modes I mentioned until now allow the device to wake up and send periodic records according to the schedule set in the data acquisition menu. However, in case the maximum possible power consumption saving is needed, we have Ultra Sleep Mode. In this sleep mode, the device disables all processes that are running on the device and goes into hibernation mode meaning that in this sleep mode, no records will be sent to the server. Also, the only way to wake the device up from ultra sleep mode is when the digital input one state changes to one or movement is detected by the accelerometer. Ignition and movement sources are not taken into account. Another important setting that we can find in the system menu is records saving sending without time sync. This setting controls when the device can generate and send records to the server, so the correct configuration here is really important for the device's operation. This setting has three different options. After position fix. This is the strictest setting we can set, as it will only allow records to be generated and sent to the server after the device gets a GNSS fix and time is synchronized. For specific use cases, it could cause some issues, such as if the vehicle is parked in a poor GNSS reception area and it loses the GNSS fix, it will stop generating and sending records to the server. Always, this mode turns off any limitations for the fix and time sync as it just generates records in any conditions. This setting is recommended for testing purposes when we want to test the device data sending on our desk in the office or when the use case does not require GNSS fix or time sync at all times. Please keep in mind that some platforms will not accept records that do not have a valid time in the records, so before using this mode, make sure the server will be able to receive all records sent by the device, even if the time won't be synchronized. After time sync, this is the default option in our configuration and it requires the device to have a time sync in order to generate and send data to the server. This also resolves the risk of records not being accepted by the server due to incorrect time, but does not imply the requirement of GNSS fix to be acquired, thus allowing us to receive tracking data even if the vehicle is parked 
in an underground parking lot. In the system menu, you will also find a group of settings called Assisted GPS Settings. Assisted GPS, sometimes referred to as AGPS or AGNSS, is a GNSS augmentation system that warms up the receiver so it can connect to the satellites quickly. After the device gets a fix, this functionality is no longer active, so it only helps us to get the first fix quicker. AGPS uses the cellular network to download a correction signal, which informs the device about the satellite's location in orbit and other important information. With Teltonica telematics devices, we are using PhotoWeb to transfer this correction signal, so if you ever see AGPS tasks created for your devices, do not be alarmed. They are created automatically by the system according to the settings set in the device configuration. As for the configuration of this feature, it is pretty basic, as we can only choose to enable or disable it depending on the device profile. This allows us to save data if, for example, we are traveling abroad and we know that roaming costs are high. Additionally, we can select the file duration. The default value is three days, but it can be changed to six hours if data consumption is not a concern and you want to always have the newest possible AGPS file loaded on the device. The last feature of the system menu I would like to talk about is static navigation. This feature allows the device to filter out any GNSS position changes that happen without the movement and or ignition not being detected. This happens because the GNSS signal is pretty weak and can easily bounce off buildings, trees, trucks, and other solid objects. The signal that bounces off these objects is then picked up by the GNSS receiver on our device, causing the location to jump around the map, even though the vehicle is parked. To battle this, our device ignores all position changes that are reported by the GNSS receiver until movement or ignition is detected. The risk with this feature is that if the movement or ignition source is misconfigured, it might cause the device to not disable the filtering. So even though the vehicle is moving, the location reported is at the last parking location. Because of this, it is especially important to make sure that movement and ignition are detected correctly before using this feature. Thank you for watching this short guide about Teltonica Configurator.